I really spent an hour on my makeup just to uh, throw on a white t-shirt. <laughs> Hi, my name is Adriana, and today I will be doing my reading wrap-up for the month of July. So, as per usual, I will start with my stats. I read a total of five books, four of which were eyeball reads, one of which was an audiobook. Certainly not the best month I've ever had, but not the worst. <laughs> Those eyeball reads totaled to 1,513 pages, giving me an average of 378 pages, and then I had an average rating of four stars. Before jumping into the book by book review, please consider liking and commenting on this video and subscribing to my channel if you like bookish things. So I will just start chronologically with the first book I finished finished in July, which was The Broken Oath by YouTube's own Pablo Suarez. This is a fantasy novel taking place in Pablo's eventual Codex Games world series. This is a prequel to what is going to be his larger series. It follows the esteemed Dr. Demira, I've never actually said her n last name out loud, Pina Rios? Pina Rios? I don't know. Follows an esteemed doctor. Later in her career, she gets approached by a shady figure to sign a contract that she can't know what she's signing until she signs it. And once she signs it, it will be magically binding because this world has many cool magic things. That was a terrible description. I am so sorry, Pablo. But this book, I really, really, really enjoyed it. Pablo himself is a medical student and found the time to write an entire freaking book. His medical knowledge takes a really large place in this book as far as the magic system and obviously the main character being a doctor herself. I really love when a book can get me interested or excited about a topic, especially a topic I had never had interest in before. I am not a biology girly. I'm not a medical girly. I was never that interested in it until this book and seeing Pablo weave in real like medical knowledge and medical technology in this kind of fantasy magical setting was so super, super cool. So well done. I really, really, really liked it. For those who don't know, I did beta read this book for Pablo in its earlier stages, and he's made some changes to the characterization of certain characters and some of the plot, and that was really, really great. I gave it four stars, because I very much enjoyed it. So if you are interested in intricate magic systems, if you are interested in kind of political thriller fantasy, I would definitely suggest this. If you have an interest in medicine, I would definitely suggest this. Very fun book. There's a little something in here for everybody. <laughs> the next book I finished, American Prometheus. Let's give a round of applause, everyone. This was, this was a time. This was a struggle. So I bought this audiobook for my boyfriend as a birthday present because he likes history and with the Oppenheimer movie coming out I thought it'd be fun for us to you know listen to this biography together, learn some more about Oppenheimer before we go into the movie. I thought I was being a great girlfriend in this gift but let me tell you his birthday is January 10th. We have been listening to this for seven months. It is a 32 hour audiobook and he will not listen to audiobooks at anything other than one time speed. So we spent the full 32 hours of this book listening to it and it took us many, many months. <laughs> and this book is way more in depth and intense than I could have ever guessed. <laughs> so it starts in Oppenheimer's childhood, him growing up in New York, going through school and his education, becoming one of the smartest people on the freaking planet, <laughs> and managing the entire Manhattan Project, and developing the atomic bomb. That is only half the book, so that's, that's the first 16 hours. The next 16 hours is in-depth knowledge 
of his trials and tribulations after World War II, of being a suspected communist, being friends with communists, is very dense legal battles about him being a fellow traveler, as they called them in the 50s and 60s. And then we get like a little bit of like the very end of his life before he dies. And that is very sad because he becomes very old and decrepit. So it's a lot. I don't know if I would suggest this or recommend this if you are interested in Oppenheimer. There's gotta be shorter books out there with a little more focus. Like, if you are just interested in the Manhattan Project, like my boyfriend and I mostly are, there's probably a better book out there for that too. I don't think I can really recommend this book. The breadth of knowledge in this book is just too wide. We're, we're doing too much. This book is doing too much. <laughs> so I, I mean, I'm glad we finally got through it, but I know way more about Oppenheimer than I ever, ever thought I would. The next book I finished, I actually have as a part of a vlog I released last week, my Trojan War retelling vlog, and that is Daughters of Sparta. If you really want my in-depth thoughts on it, I will direct you to that vlog. I don't want to just be repeating the same thing over and over again, but this book follows Helen and Clytemnestra from childhood through the Trojan War, and it is very good. The ability of this author to delve into these women and kind of portray, portray their stories, portray, portray, portray their stories in a way that really makes you feel for them and not really changing any major plot points of their stories as compared to like the original Homer retelling, but just kind of fleshing out their stories to make them a lot more sympathetic than I think I've seen in a lot of other retellings. You can see in this story that they're really just doing the best with the situation they were given and it's just it's a beautifully written story that made me very emotional, made me very excited. I just I really love this book. It's so freaking good. This was five 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 stars. So many stars. The most five starriest five star I have read in a while. Also, Claire Haywood has another book coming out semi soon. It is the story of Perseus as told through the eyes of the women in his life, uh, Danae, his mother, Medusa, obviously the monster he slays, and Andromeda, his future wife. So I am very excited for that after how freaking good this book was, especially since I'm much more interested in Perseus and Medusa than I am in the Trojan War as a Greek mythology fan. So very much looking forward to that one. I need to pre-order it sometime soon. <laughs> the next book I finished was Daughter of the Moon Goddess. I also have a vlog in which I talk about this, so I will link that in the cards if you want to check that one out as well. I read this while on vacation, so that's kind of a fun little vlog. This book is a retelling of the Chinese moon goddess myth, but obviously focusing on the daughter of the moon goddess rather than the moon goddess herself. But in this version, the moon goddess has been exiled to the moon. She is not supposed to have anyone with her besides her handmaid and ends up having a daughter which she's definitely not supposed to have. So she's keeping her daughter hidden basically her entire life. This daughter, Jing Yin, starts developing her own magic powers, making her a little more easy to spot from the celestial kingdom. And so she ends up going on the run, some mishaps, and she ends up having to hide within the celestial kingdom itself and ends up becoming the companion to the prince of the celestial kingdom. So you can kind of see how that might put her in a bit of an awkward situation but I really really ended up enjoying this book a lot more than I thought I would. This is only the second YA book I've read like this year, although this 
book. I think it's kind of straddling that line between like YA and new adult. Not that there's like adult content in it, but just I guess the themes and the way it's written, it does feel a little bit more adult than your typical YA. So, you know, if you have a reader in your life that is going to be like making that transition from like YA to like adult fiction, this might be a good one for them. Or if you're like me and don't mind reading a YA every once in a while, this is a really good option. I really, really enjoyed it. I actually got approved for the arc of the sequel on NetGalley, so I'm very excited to be picking up the sequel, hopefully sometime soon, but very much enjoyed it. it. Takes a lot of twists and turns and does a lot of things I was not expecting, so I would definitely, definitely, definitely recommend this one. The last book I read in July was Imer. This I got as actually a NetGalley arc, so I bought this afterwards and not particularly because I enjoyed it that much, but because I have someone in my life who I think will really enjoy it, so I bought it for, for that person so they can read it physically. But this is a loose Beowulf retelling, so kind of like a sci-fi Beowulf space opera almost. <laughs> Our main character is Yorick. He is a Grendel hunter for this intergalactic company that is recolonizing these old planets. These Grendel monsters were left there by the maybe not original inhabitants but older inhabitants of these planets and if the people of the company get a little too deep into their mining activities or something, these Grendel will come out and attack them. So York's job is to hunt down these Grendel and kill them. He grew up on the planet of Imer and with the company he has since left this terrible place and has gone across the galaxy on a hunting mission and now for his last hunting mission he is back on Imer and defeating an yet another Grendel. Only this time he gets a little mixed up in some shenanigans. <laughs> like I said, this certainly wasn't my favorite book I read, but I did really enjoy a lot of aspects of this book. The author does an incredible job of really immersing you in the setting of the planet Imer. It's dark, it's dreary, they have to live underground because the surface of the planet is too cold and icy, so you're just dark and cramped and everything is built out of bioluminescent organisms. So it's just a very lush setting that it was really cool to read about. I really enjoyed the exploration of a relationship between two brothers. Yorick's brother and his relationship with his brother plays a huge, huge part of this story. I don't know if I've really read any books that delves into a brother-brother relationship as deeply as this one does, and I really appreciated it. We also get a bit of a perspective as Yorick is what is called a half-breed, so his mother was an inhabitant of the planet Imer, but his father is what is called an off-worlder, so we kind of see some of his own experience as growing up on this planet not really fitting in. I looked into the author a little bit and the author grew up in Nigeria. He looks very white so he's either white passing or just a white man growing up in Nigeria so I think that does provide a bit of an interesting perspective as you know someone being being a minority growing up. So I I think there's a lot of really cool things about this book to enjoy. I just didn't necessarily love, it's very action heavy, <laughs> which is not super my cup of tea. I really wish they would have traded some of the action scenes in the middle chunk of the book for a little bit more relationship building and relationship exploring with Yorick and some of the other characters he's interacting with. But overall, I had a good time. I think I ended up giving it like a three star. So if this sounds up your alley, I would definitely suggest it. Those are the five books I read in July. I had a good time. I was very, very busy in July, so I did not get as much read as I would have hoped to. But if you've read any of these books and want to talk about them more, or if you have any questions about these books, please leave a comment down below. Thanks so much for watching, and I will catch you on the next video.